This episode is brought to you by Cole Haan, the footwear brand that celebrates extraordinary people who've transformed their passions into their careers. People like our boss, Alex Bloomberg, Gimlet's CEO and the host of Without Fail. It's the nerdiest thing, but when I'm like working on a story and then like just cutting that one piece of tape to make it work the way I want it to work, it still triggers this really satisfied part of my brain. And in those moments, I can't believe how lucky I am that this is like my job. To hear more of Gimlet's extraordinary hosts and conversation, go to extraordinariesonthemic.com. That's extraordinariesonthemic.com. Produced in partnership with Cole Hahn. A listener note. This show contains adult content and strong language. My name's Dolores. You heard of me? Or maybe you heard of Magic Hands? Magic Hands, Dolores Roach. I know what they say about me. I know they say I'm dangerous, huh? (laughs) Well, I'll tell you my story. I'll tell you the real story of what happened up there and why I came all the way down here. I'll tell you all the gory details. I wasn't even out there very long. Maybe like only three months before I had to come down underground. Three months of precious freedom in my precious New York City. That's what I'm paying for now. Because before that, I was in prison. I was at Bedford Hills Correctional Facility for Women for 16 motherfucking years of my life. Then bam, I'm just out. They gave me my clothes I was wearing when they took me, and they gave me $200. And they put me on the Metro North train from Bedford Hills to Grand Central Station. And let me tell you, by the time I get to Grand Central that day, I am fully freaking the fuck out. I'm having like a panic attack. So I just start walking. And I'm walking all the way across town through Times Square, up through Harlem, all the motherfucking way up to Washington Heights. And Broadway up there is so different. There's a gym up there now, a planet fucking fitness, with all these white chicks in spandex working out. They're all drinking green smoothies or some shit. And there's a Chase Bank where the diner was and a T-Mobile where there used to be this cute little family-run bakery. And I finally get to my block. And there's my apartment building. There's my stoop. But the buzzer's not just those buttons anymore. Now it's like a scrolling screen or some shit. Hello? Hello? Is this 18? Yes. Uh, does Dominic still live here? Sorry, I just moved in here last year, so I don't know. I'm sorry. Hey, who you looking for? I'm looking for Dominic. Dominic who? Dominic Alfonso. Dominic Alfonso, huh? Yeah, do you know him? i never seen you around here before. Well, I used to live right here with Dominic. I don't know who that is. Well, he used to run this block, and he would never let somebody working for him handle cash out in the open like that. That's how people get... Would you not blow your smoke in my face, please? Don't... Ooh, you a bitch, huh? Hard-ass bitch. Puta. Hi, look, there's a, like a guy yelling at me out here, so... Uh, and I really don't know where else to go, and I'm... Oh, God, that guy stands out there all day, every day. It's awful. She buzzed me in. 
So I walked past my mailbox in the hall and up the five flights like I was just here yesterday. And it's this white girl. She got a Columbia sweatshirt on. She lives there with her boyfriend. They got a cat. You said you used to live here? Yes. Yeah. I, and uh, and I just got out of. I was just. Uh, I've been out of the country for a minute. Oh. For 16 years, actually. So, but but my boyfriend. I thought he might still live here. Uh, you don't know where your boyfriend lives? No, not well. Well, when you put it that way, I guess he's not my. He's not my boyfriend now, but um. Oh, I just got a little lightheaded. Do you need to sit down? No, no, no. I, I'll be... Then I wouldn't be able to get back up. Oh. So once I find a... Or once I get to where I'm going, wherever that turns out to be. Do you have somebody you can call? Or... You know what? Is it, is it totally inappropriate for me to ask if I could use your bathroom real quick? The bathroom? Yeah. Um... And her boyfriend's, like, glaring at her in cold, but she just shrugs at him. So I walk in. I can't even look at the place now. It'll break my heart. I'm just staring at the floor, walking to the bathroom. And then my whole body starts fully shaking just being in here. I'm having flashes of me and Dominic in that shower. Oh, my God, I miss getting stoned and soaking in my shower. And then I get down behind the toilet. It's a different toilet seat now. It's not as nice, but there's that tile, that crack in the wall, our secret safety deposit box. It's still there. And it's a little stuck at first, but then that tile comes right out. And there's nothing there. Just dirt and concrete and a little dead spider. No Dominic and no apartment and no money. So I'm losing my shit, right? Like all the not crying I did for the last 16 years. I didn't make you nervous. I really don't want to be that person. And I just get the fuck out of there. And that fat dealer with the cigars eyeing me like a piece of meat. So I cut over to Amsterdam. There's a goddamn Starbucks on the corner now. With a bunch of hipster-looking motherfuckers. They're all on their computers. They got these little fucking earphones in. Even the laundromat's all nice now with, like, a neon sign and shit. But then I see, and I can't even believe it. Next to the laundromat, like a goddamn mirage, it's empanada loca. This episode is brought to you by Squarespace. With Squarespace, you can create a beautiful website for just about anything. An event, a portfolio, an online store, or a blog. The other day, a few producers here at Gimlet got together to read from their blogs. And some of their posts went all the way back to high school. I started a blog when I, I guess I was like a sophomore. It's called, you call this a blog title? Question mark. Oh yeah, very, um, yeah. Very self-aware. Honestly, I couldn't think of a title and I thought it was clever. Okay, so the first post is titled, So Yeah. Hi, I kind of felt like starting a blog, so here it is. Don't really know what to write about, but I spent a lot of time designing it, so I felt I should probably post something. That's it. <laughs> That's... <laughs> That's it? That's the end of it? Yeah. Were there any tags? <laughs> uh, no, just posted by Max Gibson at 10.57 p.m. Ooh, Ooh up late. late night. On, yeah. <laughs> With Squarespace, you don't need to spend time designing, which leaves more time for blogging. Squarespace offers templates that allow you to change the look and feel of your site with just a few clicks. Sign up for a free trial at squarespace.com slash Gimlet. And when you're ready to launch, use the offer code Gimlet to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Hey. 
Hey, this is Molly Fisher, host of The Cut on Tuesdays. If you haven't listened to The Cut on Tuesdays yet, you should. It's a show about the large and small dramas of women's lives and the questions that continue to vex us. I came of age in like the late 90s, early 2000s, where it was like, you had to be bald. Like pubes were so gross. I felt like the conversation was always like, should you have pubes or shouldn't you? But there was not a lot of conversation about like, what's the actual maintenance? How can I like take care of my pubes? The Cut on Tuesdays. We're venturing into the bush. I just assume everyone else is just like a Barbie doll it's underneath. Like a dolphin. <laughs> yeah. Yes. It's just like a balloon that like squeaks <laughs> when you touch it. Oh Barbie dolls, <laughs> balloons, and more on our episode Beat Around the Bush. Subscribe to The Cut on Tuesdays from Gimlet Media and The Cut wherever you listen. We'll see you next Tuesday. A few months ago, I talked to this hacker, and he told me that just by using someone's phone number, he can drain their bank accounts. Sometimes we target random people like me and you. We just target them just to see what they got because we got their phone number. We go after everything. As long as I got the number, done. Hear exactly how he pulls this off and how to protect yourself on Reply All. Listen to the episode called The Snapchat Thief wherever you get your podcasts. Empanada fucking loca! Dominic and me used to hang out at this place. Oh my God, this is like the first thing I've seen so far. They're still here. And outside the door, there's this homeless man. He's holding the door open for people for change. He's skin and bones. His face is all splotchy like meth skin, you know? He's only got a couple of teeth. Help me get something to eat, young lady. And my pops used to call me young lady. So I give this guy five bucks. I still got 195 left. Gracias. God bless you. And inside, Empanada Loca is exactly like it always was. Long skinny room, three little red tables, and this long yellow counter with all the different kind of empanadas. They got ground beef, they got plantain and cheese, guava and cheese, that was my favorite. And a lasagna empanada, seafood empanada, pepperoni pizza empanada, one with caramel apple and shit. It's not called empanada loca for no reason, you know? And it's all written out on this big, like, dry erase board menu. The same fucking dry erase baseboard menu. I think the only thing that's different is that this place was always packed. And right now, there's nobody fucking here. Except for this, like, teenage chick with the hairnet working behind the counter. Welcome to Empanada Loca. We got a special going on. Three for five dollars. Hey, wait. Are you a tranny? Uh, oh, I couldn't tell at first. Because... I'm a transgender human being. Thank you. Right. That's what I... Mm -hmm. Oh, shit, did I just offend you? Well, the word tranny is really offensive. It is? I'm a little out of the loop on what's offensive these days. I didn't mean it. However you meant it, the word's still offensive. And it's not your business anyway. Okay, well, listen, honey, I wasn't trying to hurt your feelings. If anything, I was excited. You want to buy something? <sighs> we got a special going on. Three for five, Three for five dollars, you said that. Um, thing mm -hmm. is, I really don't have an appetite right now. Thanks, anyway. I just want to crawl into a hole and sleep. But I don't even have a hole to crawl into. There's nobody who even knows I'm out. So I turn to leave. That homeless guy's already got the door back open for me. Dolores? And I turn back around, and it's Luis. Fucking Luis Batista, the son of the guy who owns this place. He used to buy weed from us. Holy fuck, it is you! And he comes out from behind the counter. He's got an apron on, and he's really filled out. He's got some scruff now, his hair's sort of long. And he gives me a big hug, grabs me real tight, feels sort of nice, you know? It's been a minute since I've been hugged like that by a man, and he smells like not that good, but it makes me calm down a little. Dolores Roach in the flesh! Man, I can't believe this. It's been like forever. 16 years. 16 years? You ain't aged a day. God damn, it's good to see you. My empanadas missed you. And he already got this red basket. He's picking out all these different empanadas. 
Keep an eye on things while I get caught up with this fine lady here. She and I go back. Okay. Come on, Dolores. You still got VIP access at Empanada Loca. And he takes me back through the little kitchen. It's completely spotless, sparkling. And then down these wooden stairs. I remember this place. He lives in the basement apartment under Empanada Loca. It's cute, too. There's these pretty brick walls, and there's a red table in the living room, like the ones upstairs in the shop. Siéntate. Hey, where's your pops? Oh, he passed a few years back. Kidney shut down. Damn, Luis, I'm really sorry. I like that old man. Yeah, thanks. Just me now. End of the bloodline. And I still don't have an appetite at all, but I don't want to be rude, you know, so I take a bite of this empanada, the guava and cheese, and it's the best thing I ever tasted in my life. And it really takes me back. I could almost smell Dominic in these empanadas. I miss him so fucking bad it hurts. So I take a bite of another empanada. This one's shredded chicken, and it's so fucking good. It's like totally intoxicating right now. So when'd you get out? <laughs> um, that would be this morning. You just got out this morning? Mm-hmm. Damn. Now I really got to break out the good stuff. Wait, wait, wait. Mm. You going to get drug tested? Drug tested? Yeah, like for parole or... Uh-uh. Mm -mm. Since you just got out, they going to no. check on you? No, I have, um... I have fulfilled the maximum requirements of my sentence. So, no, I'm done. Lucky me, huh? Lucky you. Lucky me too, huh? And he pulls out this cigar box. He's got all these jars of weed inside. And he pulls out his grinder. And he's got all these different color blunt wrappers. Wine flavor or blueberry? And he rolls this fat-ass blunt while I'm eating like a fucking fifth empanada. Yo, this strain is called Girl Scout Cookies. About 60-40 indica sativa. It's a cross between OG Kush and Durban Poison, so, you know, it's sweet and it's a nice, even, full body high. Whatever you say, man. Here, I'll light it for you. Wow. <clears throat> Holy shit. I'm not even coughing. If you just got out, is this the first time you smoked in... 16 years now. God damn. What an honor. <laughs> this shit does taste like blueberry, Luis. <laughs> there it is. There it is. Hey, hey, hey. Drink, 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 drink. Oh. <clears throat> uh. I found myself this albino guy. Fuck. I meet him in Midtown. He gets the good shit from a dispensary in Colorado. Damn. Yeah, well, you know, medical marijuana blew up the whole game while you was gone. I mean, you can't buy legally in New York just yet, but all that primo shit from the legal states, the hydroponic green and the vapes and the tinctures and the candies, it's pretty easy to find by now. But those guys on your old block can't keep up. Because even if they could supply the medical grade stuff, the kind of people moving in around here now don't want to buy from some stranger on the street. They want to be catered to. Like what kind of people moving in around here? White people, Dolores. White people. Holy shit, my lips are all wrinkly. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> I tried to say greasy and tingly, and at the same time it came out <laughs> gringly. <laughs> uh, like sharded. <laughs> Luis, I need to find Dominic. Dominic? I ain't seen Dominic since the last time I saw you. Seriously? Yeah, nah. You don't know where he is? Nah, that's what I'm saying. I got no idea but where... I remember, like, right after you went in, I heard he had some kind of heart attack. Oh, my God, what? No, 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 but he was still pretty young, you know, because 
Because then I started hearing he, he really went into witness protection. No shit. Witness protection? Yeah, but then people were saying he moved to Oregon to work at a fucking grow house or something. So nobody knows what they're talking about. They just know he ain't here. God damn it. God damn it! Hey, no, come on, it's okay. Come on. No, it's not fucking okay, Luis. I gave up 16 years of my life to protect his ass. And now there's these fucking kids living in our apartment and all our money's gone. And I don't have shit, Luis. I got a record at $195 to my name. And no, where the fuck am I supposed to go now, huh? What do you mean all our money's gone? The towel behind the toilet, everything. I saved up for five years. God damn it, Dominic! Wait, 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 but wasn't it Dominic that... What the fuck actually happened to you that day? Shit went down, Luis. Cause that's what shit does. Cause there'd been that bust in the unit down the block where we kept the shit that came in from California, remember? Yeah, yeah, no doubt. So there was this big new shipment coming and Dominic says we gotta keep it in our place just for now. And that definitely sounds, you know, risky to me, but 50 pounds of weed comes in and we put it in the closet in our bedroom just for now. And Dominic goes out and I go meet this guy downstairs, a new customer, I never met him, but he'd been referred by somebody. Right. And he looks like any one of us, but he wants to buy more weed than I got on me at the time. Uh-oh. Right. And he's pretty fucking friendly, and I'm pretty fucking trusting. Oh, Dolores. So I say he can come upstairs with me. Fuck. I'm not going to make somebody wait in the doorway, Luis. That looks even more suspicious. Yeah, but... Then as soon as we get inside, a bunch of cops fucking swarm the place. Asshole was undercover. Yeah. Damn. They said I was violent. They said I shoved my elbow in this one cop's chest. Maybe I did, but, like, they're in my house. What the fuck do they expect? But where the hell was Dominic? Well, I call his ass as soon as I get downtown, but he doesn't answer. And then they start asking me about him. They want me to make a deal, but I'm not going to do that to Dominic. I would never do that to Dominic. So I say I never heard of him, and I take the rap, because that's what you do. And because I fucked up, okay? I know I fucked up. Yeah, but you're not the And one. then I'm thinking he knows they're watching now, right? And that's why he never picks up the phone. He's got to lay low for a minute. I'm going to take this one for both of us, and then I'm going to come back, and we're going to and we're gonna pick up where we... We're going to get married, like he said we would, and, and move to Jersey and stop smoking weed and just start popping out kids. Because that was our plan, me and Dominic. That was our fucking plan. They gave me 16 years for possession with intent and assaulting a cop. 16 years of my life at Bedford Hills. For what? For being a female with brown skin selling a plant that's about to be legal now anyway? And I don't hear a word from that cocksucker motherfucker Dominic in 16 years. Yeah, but he, we literally not a word? Not a fucking word. So I'm thinking, like, maybe he got busted, too. And how the fuck would I even know? I, I was totally cut off, you know? I, what about your family? Fuck no. I got no family left, man. Oh, I thought you had... My mom died when I was nine. She was a cop. She got shot on duty. And a drug bust, funny enough. Not that it's funny, it's just fucking ironic. And my dad, after that, he was a doorman on the Upper West Side. And I mean... I don't even think he was an alcoholic. I just think he was fucked up because his wife got shot, you know? I'm the one who found him, too. Choked on his own vomit. He had eaten a... You know what? Why am I blanking out on what it was? He was just drinking, drinking, gorge himself. You know, just intake, intake. It's fucking America. <laughs> he didn't even know he needed to stop. A shish kebab. That's what it was. Anyway. My dad choked to death on his own vomit. Dolores, that's, that's horrible. It's just my life, Luis. <laughs> so now my mom's family, the Jewish side, still in Venezuela, the other side's in Barbados. I don't really know any of them. And my dad was German and Mexican, and as far as I know, his parents had stopped speaking to him before I was even born. 
Why did I think he was Puerto Rican? I'm not Puerto Rican. I'm from fucking everywhere. But I don't belong anywhere. You belong in New York City. And you could stay here. Well, honestly, Luis, if I could just crash on your couch for tonight. Nah, my dad's bedroom, still empty. Just sitting there. And I was already thinking about renting it out to make a little extra cash. So but I don't have any money. Don't I... worry about rent, okay? I got what you. What the fuck am I gonna do? I don't, I don't, I don't want to have to sell weed again, Luis. I want to be above board for once. All right, well, shit, I, I put you to work in the shop, but business is fucked, man. But you could have that room as long as you want. Your own bathroom, too, believe it or not. And I could feed you, smoke you out, just kidding, or not. Be nice to have you around, man. More and more people gone now. You'd really let me stay here for free? Not only would I let you, I'm asking you to. But why would you do that for me? Because I missed you, Dolores Roach. And he gives me a napkin. I guess my eyes are watering, and I'm stoned, but I still feel, like, nauseous because I ate way too much, way too fast. And this man I used to know is being so... He's treating me like family. And he stubs out that blunt. He's cleaning up my trash, my boogered-up napkins. Like, he's cleaning up my shitty diaper, basically. And then he takes me back to his dad's bedroom. There's a little twin bed with this pale green sheet on it, and there's a big stack of boxes in the corner. Private bathroom's right in there. I right, should get back to work. Beef don't ground itself. <laughs> but but you need anything at all? Come get me, all right? I will. Hey, Luis. Yeah. <clears throat> Did you, Dad? Did your dad die in this room? Yeah. Yep, he did. Does that bother you? No. It was peaceful in his sleep. It don't bother me. It don't bother me. I was just wondering. Okay. Well, if you need anything... I know. Thanks, man. Seriously. I owe you. You don't owe me nothing. And he goes back upstairs, and I'm sitting on his dad's bed. There's a window, but it's the basement, and there's thick black bars on the window. Like, might as well be prison, you know, which feels sort of safe, actually, down here, you know? It's like, sort of safe. The bathroom's pretty small. There's no tub, just one of those corner showers, and there's clean towels under the sink. So I take a shower, alone with the door locked, stoned, for the first time in 16 years. I'm in there for like an hour, just soaking in that hot water. And the sun's still up, but I get all curled up in that little bed with the green sheet, clean, cozy, feeling sort of safe. Think about Dominic. Think about my girl at Bedford Hills, Tabitha. And how this is going to be my first night without her in a very fucking long time. And think about Luis's dad dying in this room peacefully. Of course, I had no idea right then how many more people were about to die in this room. Maybe not so peacefully. The Horror of Dolores Roach, created by Aaron Mark, with Daphne Rubin Vega, Bobby Cannavale, Abigail Spencer, David Zayas, John Douglas Thompson, and Keita Updike. Written and directed by Aaron Mark. Executive produced by Mimi O'Donnell. Produced by Katie Pastor, Matthew Boll, and Daphne Rubin Vega. Associate produced by M.R. Daniel. Sound design by Haley Shaw. Foley recording by Nico Osborne. Mixed by Matthew Boll. Score by Allison Layton Brown. The Horror of Dolores Roach is a production of Gimlet Media.
thanks to our sponsor, Squarespace. To build your next website in minutes, go to squarespace.com slash Gimlet for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use the offer code Gimlet to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain.